a Rolls Royce is effectively not much dearer than a 14, 15 plate Vauxhall Corsa that I've got on my car pitch currently, a little one litre petrol. I mean, how can something like that be worth so little? I, I, I don't have words for that. Now, before we get into today's video, just a quick mention from our sponsor today, which is our good friends at Top Don and their amazing JS2000 Jump Pack. This is a lightweight, portable jump pack with 2,000 amp capacity. They can jump start up to a 4 litre diesel engine, and it can do it multiple, multiple times. It's a really straightforward thing to use. Simply plug the jump leads in, press your boost button, and you'll have any vehicle up to 4 litres up and running in a matter of seconds. But it doesn't end there as well because it's also a power bank. So it's able to power DC auto electric, power USB directly for such as a phone, has a built-in torch. It's a really useful bit of kit. Super lightweight and portable and at an affordable price. Now we generally use these jump packs every single day. I cannot recommend these enough. We've been using these now for nearly two years without any issues whatsoever. So if you're looking for a jump pack, whether it's just for home use, maybe it's for more commercial use, whatever it's for, love one, put it in the boot of a car then get hold of the JS2000 series now they are also back on promotion as well they usually retail at £75 which is massively cheaper than any of the rivals out there but you're going to get it even cheaper in fact they are now back on promotion for just £59.99 simply use the promo code HAPPY20 and you will get discounted to £59.99 off the standard retail price also don't forget to check out the JS1500 back on promotion a small lighter weight jump pack with 1500 amp capacity Capacity, but still packs a mighty punch capable of powering up to a three litre diesel engine that has also been discounted with the promo code happy 20 down to 47 pounds and 99 pence the jump packs are currently on offer only until the 26th of august so make sure you get hold of them today by clicking on our links in the description please make sure you use our links in the description to make sure you're getting the correct machines from the property distributor here in the uk Make sure you're getting all the correct warranties and, of course, the best possible price by using that promo code HAPPY20. So make sure you use those links in the description and get hold of yours today. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at some classic car auction footage. Now, today's video comes from the uh, fantastic Angular Car Auctions uh, up at Kings Linway. Uh, they uh, hold uh, auctions every few months, dealing in hundreds and hundreds of classic vehicles. Uh, and I'll put their website details in the link description so you can find them. It is somewhere that I am looking to go. Unfortunately, they've got a sale on very imminently, and I'm not going to be able to make that because I'm actually away at that point. However, they've got another sale in a couple of months, I think in November. And uh, I'm going to mark that one down in the calendar to attend. Classic car auctions are something that I don't really attend that often. I've been to one or two in there over the years. But I am really interested in classic cars. I'm very passionate about them as well. And actually been thinking over the last uh, few weeks really that I should maybe start to dabble in the odd one here and there. So I think this will be a golden opportunity to look at some classic vehicles of all types. Uh, and see what uh, goes through the Angular car auction. So this is a reaction video to that. So as we go through, I'm going to pick out some vehicles. And you know, I can give you my views and opinions on them. And of course... I want to hear your thoughts as well in that comment section. So anyway, let's jump straight into it and have a look at the latest sale from Angular Car Auction. Right, let's dive in. Um, I've donned some beautiful headphones because I can't hear otherwise. Uh, so we'll get straight into it. I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to go through them randomly. I've just started off about an hour, hour or so into the auction. For your first few lots are sort of like non-runners and project cars and stuff like that. But we've now uh, found something that really interested me straight away. A beautiful blue uh, Triumph Stag. Uh, probably one of the best cars that British Lane had ever made, and they didn't make many good cars. Anyway, let's see what this does. Pretty sure that is an original colour, because they did make them in that colour. Lot number 235, gentlemen, have a look at this, the Triumph Stag. This one registered 1973. Well... It's from a deceased estate. The restoration work, a lot of it's been done, but unfortunately not quite completed, was it? It's done about eight years ago, so it's all held up well. Have a look around that. No soppy bids on that. They was doing a proper job. No silly bids. I'm going straight in. So like I said, it's, someone's um, basically passed away, part of the estate. But it's been uh, restored, I assume, paint-wise, was it six, seven, eight years ago? 
I mean, so far it looks like it's held up quite well, but there's quite a lot of electric stuff that's come out there and switches and stuff. Um, so it's probably not a million miles away. The main thing really on a car like that is, is you're dealing with corrosion and rotten body. So if you get a good body, one that's painted well, everything else is you know, it's not as bad as maybe dealing with the bodywork. The next thing really you'd look at would be like engine and obviously switch gear and stuff. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what this does. Six to eight grand. I'll give you some example. I mean, obviously I don't know the full stats of this one. It can vary what engine's still in it. Uh, we still got the original three liter in it because some of them were converted to V8, so uh, Rover V8s, um, and also as well as the mileage situation. But a really nice ones are these rag tops like this. They're doing 20, 30 grand for absolutely outstanding. Maybe 15 grand for something that's nice, and this is a nice one with a colour. So six to eight grand, I think, for a car that's driving through, ain't bad. At four thousand pound, a low start indeed. At four thousand pound, cost you more than that to get it to looking like that. Four two, four four. 4.6, 4.6 home bid, 4.8 over the back at 48, 5 bid at 5 and bid, 5,000 pound you on two sir, yes or no, that 5, that 5, two's on the net now, 5.4, 5.4, 5.6, 5.8, 6,000, plenty of interest, 6.2, 6.2 on sale, 6.4, 6.8, 6,800 pound you on 7,000, exhaust rubbers have fallen off, 7,000, 7-2 is worth a try. That's 7-2. That's 7-2, yes. 7-4. Seven, 7-6. Seven, 7-6, six. Seven, six, I'm mid at 76. You're on 8 now. That's 76. Even the chrome work and everything on it looks well. Roof looks well. Obviously, it's not the same as being there, but on first impressions, that looks a really tidy stag that just needs a couple of grand, let's say, maybe thrown at it, potentially. I mean, it's hard to know what it needs, but the basics are there. In the middle of the room, 7,006, that's 76, 78, 78, 8,000 pound, 8,000 pound is in the middle of the room at 8 bid, 8,000 pound the bid, you're all done all sure, but 8,000 bid, you're out on the right, 8, 2, 8, 4, 84, still going, 400 pound, shaking his head, he's been in all the way, 8,400 pound, my bid's in the middle, on sale and going, make no mistake about it, once, 8,400 pound, you're done twice. Any further interest, I don't want to miss anybody. That's yours, sir. Cheap motor car indeed. Um. 8 4, so top of the estimate there. Well, actually, above estimate, but I still think that's a cheap car for, for what that is. And if I was going to go and buy Triumph Stag, which is a car I do like, in fairness, I would be looking at one like that in that colour, for example, that one of the top colours. So that is a really nice example. And as I said, I don't think that needs a lot really to get it right and um, potentially a lot of uplift and, and profit and margin in that. I mean, most people are going to buy that, probably just going to use it and love it, but it's definitely a car that's only going to go one way that is up. Right, moving on now, just spotted another British classic. Quite rare, actually. I'll show you this one. Well, now, I know what you're thinking straight away. You're going to think, a lot of people think that's an MGB. It isn't. It's actually an MGC GT. Uh, now, the MGC was very short-lived. It only lasted for about two years. I think they ran roughly from 67 to 69, if I remember rightly. Give or take a few months. Um, they were a straight six-engine, uh, straight six three-litre displacement. And it was... I'm not sure it was a direct... I'm not sure it was directly the same engine, but it certainly was loosely based on the Austin Healey 3000 engine. The original uh, sort of MGB, which I mean, effectively looked the same car, the MGB GT, that had a, um, a 1.8 uh, B series engine, which ran pretty much, well, it did run all the way through its life, and obviously did the V8 version as well. This is smack bang in the middle, 150 brake uh, version. They were extremely rare because they ran for a few years. Like I said, so because of that, prices of these things are huge, uh, and like I said, you, you, these are far more expensive than the equivalent MGB you'd find on the market, so it's a very, very rare thing. 253 there, the MGC GT, first registered 1968. It's got the overdrive, this one. It's showing just 15,000 miles with five registered keepers. Where are we going to go with this one? 8,500. At 8,500 on bid here now, then at 8,000. Cheap start. Five. At eight five, I'm bid now. Then at eight thousand five hundred eight six eight seven. At eight seven, I'm bid now. Then at eight 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 nine. At eight thousand nine hundred pound, I'm bid now. Then at eight thousand nine. At eight thousand nine, look how clean it is for the MGC GT at eight thousand nine hundred pounds. Struggling, 
But what a car, interior that's lovely with the red piping, black leather, wire wheels, obviously way before the horrible rubber bumper models that came later in the 70s. Uh, yeah, this is a nice thing, but struggling. At £8,900 there with the red piping on the black leather. For me, beautiful looking car, this at 8,009. At 8,009, fill it up internet. At 8,900 pounds. At 8,900 pound there, it's no money for this sort of car. At 8,900. At 8,900, looking for nine quick anywhere, but it's at 8,900 pound. It is now going once. 8,900. Can't see this selling. Pound, 9,000. At 9,000. Last minute bid. At £9,000. At £9,000. I've been asked to submit it, but you're a long way off, really. But at £9,000. But you've got to be in it to win it. At £9,000, I'm bid there at 9000 Looking for one quick anywhere, but it's at £9,000. My bid is in the room at £9,000. It is going once. £9,000. I've been asked to submit it going twice. Last time with you, sir. It's very provisional. At £9,000 last time. That's very provisional. 1480. We'll see what we can do for you, but. £5,000 under reserve, or sorry, I don't know what reserve is, but the lower estimate. Um, yeah, you're miles off. That That is very cheap. Maybe there's something wrong with the car. Who knows? You don't know unless you go looking around it up and close, but on the face of it, it looked a cheap thing um, for what it was. Uh, I, I think it looked cheap anyway, but there we go. Right, scrolling on, let's see what we can find. No, I have just noticed it's actually. 13 at 86, thank you. Not 273 there, the Ford Transit bonus first registered 1973. No, sorry. UK registered at 1991. UK registered 1991, little. F right, it's in 1973 then, that's uh, not nowhere near. 91, Ford Transit, so it'll be a Mark III Transit. They ran from around 85, 86, if I remember rightly all the way up to about 2001. Uh, this is an early, earlier one, so it's like a slopey front, we call it. Then they had uh, the smiley-shaped ones that people recognise. The early ones, they did play with a lot of the engines in the early 80s and 90s until they eventually sort of settled on, really, the, the renowned one, which was the banana engine diesel. But this is not a diesel. This is a petrol version. So a two-litre petrol. I'm not sure which engine's in it. It might show us another bonnet in a minute. I would imagine they would have ran two of the two petrol engines around that time, so there'll be the two-litre Pinto engine, which anyone who's bought a Ford Cortina or any Ford in the 70s and 80s will remember. And also, the um, they did a double overhead cam Sierra um, Sapphire engine. I think they put them in the transits as well. They certainly put them in the LDVs later on, and ran them on LPG and stuff. So it'd probably be either or. I suspect it's probably a Pinto. Maybe it'll let on. But they said short wheelbase 80. Very basic thing. But my word, what a lovely van on third phase. On first impressions, it looks really nice. Full transit bonus, MOT'd until April next year, showing just 47,000 miles. Where are we going to go with this one then? Lovely, clean looking van, that, and I'm straight in here online at 3,003. At 33, I'm. 3,3, I'll be like, that, me hand up. Now then at 3,003, 3,4, 3, 4, 3 5. 3.6. At 3.6, I'm bid now then at 3.006. Looking for 7 quick anywhere for that, but it's at 3.6. At 3.006 there for the little transit bonus. Don't see many of these about anymore. At 3.6. At 3.600 pound, I'm bid here now then at 3.6. 3.7. At 3.7, I'm bid now then at 3.7. At 3.7, 3.8, 3.9. At 3.009, I'm bid. At 3.9, 4.000, 4.1. At 4 1, I'm bid now. It's in the room still at 4 1, 4 2. At 4 2. At 4,200 pound, I'm bid. Again, this is struggling. Here now, then at 4 2. At 4,200 pound, I'm bid here now, then at 4,002. It is still provisional. 4 3. Not with you, net. In the room at 4 3. At 4,003. It's still provisional at this sort of money at 4,300. 4 4. At 4 4. At 4,400. At 4,4, 4, I'm bid here now, then at 4,400 pound, I'm bid now, then at 4,4, 4, looking for 4, 5. At 4,005, I'm bid there now, then at 4,005. 
at £4,500 on bid there now then at four five six. If you come in quick net at £4,500 provisionally it is going once, twice provisionally at £4,500 provisionally with you. Well, I was quite surprised at that really, 4500 I mean, I'd be tempted to bid on that. I, I thought it was going to do the six seven grand all day long, I'll be honest with you. So I'm quite shocked at that. I don't think it makes a difference if it being a diesel or petrol or anything like that. But that sort of age of classic van, it, it doesn't really matter. To be honest, I'd probably just prefer to have a petrol uh, in, in that guise, to be honest, personally. And I'd say it's a nice thing. Quite shocked at that one. What's next coming in? Then we are on lot 274, it is showing there. He's got a proper camera, that cameraman in the background, running, running with that cradle. There is the Vauxhall Astra there, the convertible first registered in 1993. It's been in storage for a few years now, it's stated as running and driving well, six registered owners, it's here to sell. I haven't got a proper picture of it, but it looks like, from, from what I can see and what I can read, a Mark, would be a Mark II Astra convertible. Well, and I'm straight in. £800 on bid here now, it's no reserve, £900 at £900 on bid now then at £900 bid, at £900,000 bid, at £1,000 on bid here now then at £1,000 bid, at £1,000 looking for £1,100 anywhere, £1,100, £1,200, £1,300 do you want? £1,400 on bid here now then at £1,400 bid, at £1,400 on bid now then at £1,400. So it's a K Reg, uh, so it's a Vauxhall Astra K Reg, um, 1992? Roughly that would be uh, convertible. Um, the strange things about the Astra convertible was the I mean, they did this with a few of the odd Vauxhalls actually. The Mark II Astra finished on J registration if I remember rightly, and the Mark III came in, and that ran from ninety one I think up to about ninety eight. Um, but the convertible carried on for a couple of years afterwards. Like I said, they did it with a few of the Vauxhall models, usually the niche stuff like the vans or the estates and stuff, because they, they would usually wouldn't have the, the the new convertible and that model they were bringing out available or the van. Like I said, the Astra, um, what they called the vans, uh, Bedford Astra Max, they ran as over as well. So you do see a few of these now and then on the K's and L regs, and I've always, and actually in the early days I was offered a few of these. I never really, I never actually bought one, but I've driven them. This is a two litre petrol. Uh, it'll be the over a cam version, so the uh, the older sort of like an SRI eight valve cab engine. Let's have a look and see, anyway, see what it does. Fourteen hundred is staying in the country at fourteen hundred. At fourteen hundred pound on bid there and there. At fourteen hundred, looking fifteen quick if you come in, but it's at fourteen hundred is now going once, fourteen twice last time and sold out the door. Then at fourteen hundred is fourteen hundred. That's yours, internet. Oh, right. Then we go. I thought that was a cheap car. Genuinely, I thought that was a cheap car. Didn't look like it had a rip roof. Um, paintwork looked pretty decent on it. Not a bad uh, engine, the 2-litre. I'm going to have a convertible. I don't really want the 1.6 version or something sluggish. I want something that's got a little bit of poke in it. I didn't think that looked a bad car, to be fair. I thought that was all right. There's a few things today that I've been putting my hand up on. Right, next one in. Something that I used to cut my teeth on when I first started this game. Oh, whatever long ago would that have been now? 18, 19 years ago? Yeah, this one, 1992. Runs and drives, you can all see that. Drove in. Ford Fiesta. Now, I bought and sold loads of these when I first started. You could pick these up. And going back now, what year when I started doing cars? 2005. Sounds not that long ago, but it was. 2005. And you pick these up for 150, 200, 300 quid max. Um, and you'd probably make a couple of hundred pound out of them. Usually quite reliable. Um, not really that bad on the older engine front. The engines were quite decent, to be fair. Although they did burn oil. Um, but sills, sills, oh my god, they used to rot. Patching them up, stuff like that. You know, repairing sills and stuff like that. Getting for an MOT. Try and buy them with a bit of MOT on. It's just the easiest way I managed to make money out of them. But now, God, these things have shot up recently. This one's got no reserve on. It's a 11L hex on a 92. I think they started on G plate. Um, some are four speed, some are five speed. By this point, most were five speed. We'll see what this does. Looks a nice thing. Doesn't look a bad little thing. Looks all in a piece, doesn't it? Have a look at it. Where do you want to be with this? £1,100. A low start. It's on sale. And with you from the word go. At eleven hundred pound, yeah, eleven nine bid, twelve the bid, twelve hundred pound only bid at twelve thirteen bid, fourteen bid, fourteen fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred sixteen hundred on my left. That's sixteen seventeen hundred. That's seventeen hundred. Thanks for. 
there's interest going up everywhere there's bids coming from all places Wow, 1700 quid for an old Fiesta. Let me know at 17, 18, fresh money at the back. 1800 pound, 19 bid. 1900, you want 2000? At 1900, the bid's in front. 2000 bid, it's over the back now, 2 1. At 2100 pound, at 21, the bid. Other things to just put out on these, the early ones like this one, so this probably changed on around 93, 94. The um, fuel caps, they were built into the quarter. Um, but whereas the later ones, they actually put proper capping because it used to rot on these quarters. Bid at 21. At 2100, selling away. At 21, do you want 20? Yes, 22. It's behind you. At 2200, do you want 23, sir? At 22, it's over the back. At 2200, I'll take 23 anywhere before it goes once. 23, just in time. At 23, at 2300 pounds. At 23. Yes or no? 24. At £2,400, it's over the back again at 24, the bid. At 2400 you want one more? At, thanks, let me know. At 24, it's over the back and gone, then you're all done once, twice. Third and last. That's yours on the back. Cheap motor car, 2400 Just remind me your number. £2,400. Where were these buyers? What, 16, 17, 18 years ago, when I had mine up for sale in my local paper for 495 and I was arguing with people to try and get every last penny out of my car and selling it for like 425 and thinking that I've been an ad over. <laughs> Never mind. Right, let's see what uh, else we can find. Right, next one we've seen. A uh, real soft spot of mine. Let me show you this. There is the little Rover 420 SLI. First registered 1997 there. It's MOT'd until May next year. One owner from you, this. Right. Rovers. Now... I like Rovers, I have to say I've got a soft spot for them. When I first started out, like I said, I was buying like Fiestas, Escorts. I used to buy a lot of Rovers, mainly because a lot of dealers, by this point, I got sick of being bitten by them for egg gasket issues. But I learned very quickly how to spot them and how to deal with them. And also sometimes people thought their gaskets had gone on them when actually they hadn't. I might explain more about that later on. But anyway, this is a 420 SLI, so it's not got the Rover K series in, which was renowned for egg gasket failure. This is an earlier engine they used in them from a called M series, which could have a gasket issues, but it was not in the same league as the K series was. So it was not a bad little engine. This is a beautiful 97, the 420 SLI. I said I had one of I had numerous of these and bought and sold them. This has got no reserve. If this was anything below a grand, my hand would be like that buying it. And it drove a hundred miles to the sale. So there we go, that's how confident our vendor was. They drove it a hundred miles here. It's no reserve, it's here to sell. One owner from you, £700. At £700 on bid now, looking for eight quick anywhere, but it's at £700 bid. At £700 on bid here now, looking for eight quick anywhere, 750 okay. At 750 bid here now, then at 750 looking for 800 for it quick anywhere. At 750 bid. Little Rover 420 SLI. Shame it hasn't got the spoiler on the back, so with my little lip spoilers on. I, my early one, I had a blue one. I had a... Um, had a little spoiler on, but nonetheless. At 750, one owner from you. At 750, I'm bid now, then at 750, it is going once. 750, it is going twice. You're sure you're all gone and done. It's no reserve, it's selling. For 750 pounds, it is. Nice, cheap little car for somebody. That's why I need to go to this auction. I need to get myself down there. I say, what a drive back that would have been. I'd have bought that for. Seven, eight hundred quid, and do you know what? I don't care if I didn't sell it. I'll just love it and use it probably. Um, I don't know where I put it. Yeah, that was a, um, a cheap, cheap car. And those old Rovers, I think, some nice ones like that will go up in value. Although trying to keep them in good order is is difficult. Some of the MGs as well later on, do you know, like ZR, ZSs. I think some of them will be worth some money in the not too distant future. Uh, but they said I used to buy and sell Rovers all the time. I always say they used to get them quite cheap because of obvious reasons. But they were good sellers. And see, so if you've got really nice ones, you could usually sell them to a lot of older people who would buy them. And uh, yeah, I think I actually started out, the first sale I went to, I bought a couple of cars. One of them was a Rover. Again, a green one, 420 SLI. And I flipped the money on it, like I doubled my money in a few days on it. And that was one of the main reasons why I started going to the auctions and buying and getting into the motor trade in the first place. I used to buy so many of them. So many of them. Anyway, let's move on. Right, next thing I'm going to look at, we're going to look at something German. Bit of a modern classic. 293 German BMW, this one the 323i convertible. 
It's got full service. It's hard to think now that is actually now a classic car. Um, say these were, I was still buying some BMs like this 10, 12 years ago. History, manual gearbox, manual soft top in good condition. You can all see that. Have a look at it. What's it worth? 1999 323 i convertible if you're going to buy a 323 i think you need it in a manual february the mot good long mot on there good long mot till february no soppy bids i think they were a 170 grade what's it worth does look all in a piece as well doesn't it i'm bid 1200 pounds which doesn't seem a lot of money 13 1300 pound 14 15 Fifteen hundred pound. My bid's in the room. Sixteen bid. Sixteen bid. You want seventeen? Look at that roof. Look, the condition of that roof is worth that. Seventeen. Like seventeen hundred pound. That's seventeen to bid. It's a three two three I as well. Manual. Eighteen hundred pound. Eighteen hundred pound the bid. Nineteen bid. Nineteen hundred. It's on sale. I'm with you. Two thousand pound. Two thousand pound the bid. You want one? That two thousand pound. Yes or no? Thanks for letting me know. That two thousand pound. I sell it. Make no mistake convertible BM at £2,000. Any further interest in the room or elsewhere at £2,000. You're all quite sure once. £2,000 the bid twice. Wave if I can't see you. Make no mistake, it's on sale and gone. 2000 Didn't look a dear car to me, that. I think if you're going to cut your teeth into a classic, that's not a bad car to start with because they were generally quite well built. Um, and the engines, them straight six engines, were well built as well. Didn't really give much gripe them to straight six engines. Mainly, mainly just like um, coolant issues and stuff like that. Water pumps you used to get a lot of leaky water pumps on the straight six. They're on the front though, dead easy to do. But other than that, they were genuinely quite robust. Uh, but that's not a bad one. They've got a good roof on it. Looks a solid body on it. Wasn't a terrible colour. Manual as well, which in a three two three you, you want the manual because it's a little bit. Obviously, it's, a, it's not the smaller straight six they did, because I think they did a two-litre straight six as well, if I remember rightly. But they did a 323, 325, 328 as well, and different power bands going up. I can never remember roughly, but I think they were about 160, 170. So having that manual box just, just helps along you a bit, you know. But anyway, cheap car, cheap, cheap car. I didn't think that was dear. Let's have a look, see what else we can find. Right, next one spotted. Um, don't see many of these anymore either. They are fading away. Uh, but um, let's see what it is. Mine, you've actually had that sounds well, doesn't it? 309, the Range Rover Vogue coming in. Lots of work done on this, 2002. So that is a 2002, so it's one of the last ones of the P38. So this is a Range Rover P38. They ran from 90, ooh, I'm going to say six, could be late five. I'll stand corrected, but round 95, 96, up to 2002, late 2002. What a transformation when these came out. Obviously, before that, you had the Range Rover Classic that basically started out in the 70s, but this moved up a gear. Air suspension, the engines were heavily modified as well and updated a little bit. Still using the same V8 from previous models, but just tweaked and changed, obviously. Uh, so lots of the new kit on there. And so far, far superior to drive in the previous classic models. And obviously then we're on to the next shape, which is the L332. But this is a nice one in black. It's the 4.6 petrol. They think they did a 4 litre V8 and they did a 4.6. I had actually uh, driven a few of these. In fact, a guy who works for me uh, used to have one of these. I used to borrow it on occasion. It was a lovely, lovely thing. Although riddled with issues. Would you believe it? A Range Rover with riddled with issues. It's uh, MOT right round till May. Lots and lots of work done. I haven't got time to read that all out. Those of you who are interested will have read it. The description's in the window. Lots and lots of work done to this vehicle. It's rare to see one in black as well. Where do you want to be with it? I don't mind. 1200, a low start. 1200, 13, 14, 1400. For a Range Rover. A 14, I never thought I'd see the day. Not one that drove in, sounds like that. Sounds My colleague was trying to buy that, his hand would be up. Lovely, doesn't it? 1400, I'll take 15, 15 the bid. 15, only bid at 15 bid. 1500 pound, I'm bid. That's 16 the bid. 1600 pound, I'm bid at 16 bid. That's 1600, all I can do is ask. That 1600 pound. That's 1600, I'll take 17 anywhere. Listen to that. For 1600 pound. Lots of money spent on this vehicle, don't forget. 
at £1,600 any more for any more all I can do is ask at £1,600 once £1,600 twice any further interest in the room or at 17 17 you leave it to the last minute 18 on the internet now Competition. Eighteen hundred pound. Eighteen hundred pound. Thanks. Let me know. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred pound. All done with it once, twice, third and final time. Eighteen hundred provisional. Eighteen hundred quid provisional. I think that was cheap for uh, a P thirty eight. And again, there's only one thing that's going to happen to those. The prices are going to go up. Right. Next one. Another van, but uh, something I used to buy and sell a lot of. And I'm sure you guys have owned or know one. Someone who's had one. Ford again, oh, that's a tidy looking Escort van isn't it, have a look at that, 2001 Escort 55 diesel van, MO2. Ford Escort, everyone's owned a Ford Escort at some point or knows someone who's had an Escort and the van in particular uh, was, a, uh, was a decent thing actually. And I'd say the van is probably more popular these days than the car was, albeit in the standard form obviously, I'm not talking about obviously all the, the RS versions and stuff like that, they're just like pff, up there with value wise. You know, I've seen a few escort vans flying around recently. People have turned up in them or whatever. You know, seen them at parks somewhere. And people do look and back at these now with some fondness because uh, they say they used to be everywhere and now they're sort of vanishing fast. This red one, perhaps maybe it was X Royal Mail. A lot of them were uh, in red. But it's a 55D. Pretty much all of them were 18 diesels. They did do a turbo diesel, but they were really quite rare. I mean, you might I'd buy. 20 escort vans and i get one the turbo diesel and most people just went for the straight diesel which was really reliable at 1.8 which ran all the way through the late 80s 90s even into the 2000s as well to about 2007 8 they started to evolve into common rail and then just became unreliable uh, with all sorts of other things bolted onto it but they were a decent decent unit and lumpy things these and they say everyone had one of these i mean i used to buy these for hundreds of pounds and sell them make a quick profit on i suspect this is going to do a bit more than 500 quid till May 25 it runs and drives you can see that it's had three owners only three owners the last owner's had it since 09 last registered owner July 09 well they don't come much cleaner than that do they my word above someone came to me and said I've got this van for sale she presented me that and said they wanted I don't know 1800 quid for it I don't think I'd even hesitate to buy it incredible diesel escort van does look well, no sobby bids, 1700, 1800, 1800 pound is on the net, 1800 pound, 18 only bid, I'll take 19 bid, 1900 pound the bid at 19 bid, that 1900 pound, where would you find one looking like that, at 1900 pound, at 1900 pound, it's worth a lot more than this I would have thought, at 19, a couple of sales ago we sold one for about four and a half grand, we got one here for £1,900. At 1900 All I can do is ask. At 19 Obviously, it's not the same as looking online as it is there. It looks like it's got a little bit of damage on the pillar. So the near side rear pillar on the door. I'm not sure if it's a shadow or not. I don't know if you think you can see better what your view is. But even so, £1,900, £1, one of those. What a clean, clean boss that is. I'll take £2,000 for it anywhere. At £1,900, it's two for it anywhere. At £1,900, I'm going to go away provisionally at this money once. £1,900, you're all done twice. Third and final time, you're all quite sure. £1,900. That's provisional bid. We'll see what we can do for you. £1,800 went off a bit of for 19 and all that, well, provisional. But someone, like I said before, came in and asked me for £800 for that. I think I'd have bought it. As long as I pop my head under and it's not like welded up to death or anything like that, where it's imminently about to fall apart. If it looked and drove as honest as well as it looked there, I think I'd buy that because I don't know, I just think, would I even dare put it on a forecourt and try it? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would have tried it. I don't think, you know, certainly I've not got any worry about reliability compared to an old Vesco van compared to some modern stuff. I generally think there'd be someone out there who would think, do you know what, I want a van. Vans are silly money anyway. I'm going to buy that and I'd appreciate something that actually I can use and be useful as well. And van money, you can pay two grand now for a crappy old van with DPF problems and all sorts you just chug along and you know just try and make a shilling out of. Why not just go buy an old Escort van that you could just probably keep going for a few years and love and appreciate? 
and probably will go up in value. I don't know, it's my view. MGB GT V8. MGB GT. One of the differences is the V8, the factory V8. Gentlemen, make no mistake about that. 1975. Now that MGC earlier struggled. So I'm going to expect this to do the same, to be honest, but we'll see. Factory V8. It's got extensive history file, this has. With over £19,000 worth of invoice. There you go. Lots and lots of invoices with it. I mean... Again, we're not in the room, but I mean, maybe it's bad lighting, but that paintwork on the front don't look good. Wouldn't take a lot of tidying, would it? Have a look around it. You tell me where do you want to be. It is a factory run. So, yes, a proper one. Factory V8. Hard to find now. I'm straight in at 73. That's 73, 100 pounds. 73 the bit. That's 75. Seven. Keep mentioning factory V8, which is very rare i have to say you know but it does look very tatty on the paint and that was going to cost thousands to do again and you're going to find other stuff underneath as well you probably end up repainting the car so a bit with caution seven five only bit of seven five seven 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 nine eight thousand eight thousand bent eight thousand pound only bit of eight thousand pound the bit the v8 uh, eight tailgate in the back doesn't look right either it's, it's different shaded or faded away you're repainting this car a thousand pound that eight thousand pound the bid i'll take twos that eight thousand pound come on gentlemen we should have started at more for a v8 one of these it doesn't look in bad order either but eight thousand pound eight thousand pound the bid gentlemen you're all done all sure with it eight thousand eight thousand pound all i can do is ask for a fair way off for eight thousand pound any further interest at eight thousand once 8,000 twice. Gentlemen, I think it probably need to be more, but I'm going to submit it at 8,000. Be the cheapest V8. I know you're going to say it's the cheapest V8, but it wants repainting. It, it wants repainting. And I can guarantee you, you'll probably be doing other things to that as well. So I didn't think that was a terrible bid. And you look at that MGC earlier, I know which one I'll be buying. It wouldn't be that B V8, put it that way. Right, to finish off with, a uh, classic car auction would not be a classic car auction without a Rolls Royce. So, let's have a look at a roller. So, uh, straight away, I know that is a Rolls Royce Silver Spirit. A man from Crew knows his rollers uh, and his Bentleys as well. So... This is a 1987 model, which means it could be injection, but it might not be. Um, some of the later ones in the 80s, that can't exactly roughly whether they change them to injection. But anyway, the point being, it's a Rolls Royce Silver Spirit. They're not worth a great deal of money, would you believe? You would uh, one of these vehicles where they go through auctions, and you in your head you would look at it and think, you know, if, you did, if you're not in the know. That must be worth you know, 10, 20, 000, you know, tens of thousands of pounds, some people would guess. They're generally not worth a lot of money. But my word, what a lot of car you get. This is proper champagne motor in for lemonade money. But it will empty your wallet. Because everything on it would be extremely expensive to repair. Um, but anyway, let's see what it does and have a look inside. It looks a lovely one. Have a look at it. This is the uh, fuel injection model. It's a lovely is a fuel injection model that's a good that's a good sign lovely looking motor car isn't it lovely looking car it's got extensive history with it we've got a complete book pack in the office and the owner's manual there you go looks lovely indoors come and have a look around it i think you'll find that's a lovely lovely rolls royce i've got commission bids here i'm going straight in at four six four eight five bid five two with me that five two is only bid with me at 52 and the car is on the sale and with you that beautiful inside absolutely beautiful five two i'll take five four anywhere five two the bid that five two is at 54 anywhere that five thousand two hundred pound at five two the bid that five two only bid at five two i'm bid five three i don't mind five four back with me at five four at £5,400, I'm going to sell this 
at 5,400 pounds. On sale and going, make no mistake, gentlemen, at 54. At 54, I'm bid at 54. 5556, five, back with me at 56, I sell. At 56, at 5,600, awful lot of car for no money. At 5,600 pounds, at 56, a bid. It's with me at 56. At 56, he's with me, make no mistake, at 5,600, I'll take 5,7 anywhere. At 5,600 pounds. On sale and going, this car. It's going out the door at £5,600 on commission, at £5,600 once, £5,600 twice, wave of £50 now if I don't see it, at £5,600. Sold on commission now. £5,600 for a Rolls Royce, which has still got MOT on it till April next year. It's probably still being used regular. I mean... I, I, I don't have words for that. You mean you look, you can buy for five or six grand these days, and you can get some nice cars out there. But we're talking about luxurious cars that you can still, in today's world, with prices of cars look at going up over the last few years, that a Rolls Royce is effectively not much dearer than a 14, 15 plate Vauxhall Corsa that I've got on my car pitch currently, a little one litre petrol. I mean, it just, it's just. Oh, just world of cars i mean how can something like that be worth so little but there we go right the auction reaction video is completed let me do a bit of a sum up i first of all will say um that those vehicles we saw i thought were very cheap now i only picked out a few bits and bobs i was i was trying to mix it up a little bit but i did get dragged into some bits that i i personally did like i have to say if the sales are like that all the time, I, I could be a buyer of some vehicles there because there was some cars that I just wouldn't be able to stop myself from bidding on. And it is something that I personally want to get involved in more, dabbling in the old classic now and then. I don't mean like going and buying five or six and trying to deal in them. You know, that, that's a very niche market. But the odd one, you know, a couple of two or three a year, maybe something like that. Buy something really nice that doesn't need loads of work. Maybe just a bit of fettling and we can make it look nice and maybe look to retail or maybe look to do something else of it. Maybe we could buy something, do some uh, vlogging on the vehicle, but making it put it back A1 or put it back into good condition and maybe looking to sell it. Uh, maybe as a competition uh, prize or something like that and do some tickets. I don't know. But there's definitely something to be done there. I am going to go to the next sale uh, after there's one in a few days' time, so I'm not going to go to that one. But there is one due um, in November. I think it's every sort of two months, roughly. So I'm going to work my diary out so I make sure I can get to that one because it is a hell of a long way from where I am. But it is one of the best classic car auctions uh, out there. I, I feel for me anyway, particularly because it deals in vehicles literally from a few hundred pound no reserve stuff. All the way up to stuff then you know big big money so it's it's very broad and they say you can go there whether you're looking to spend by a 20 30 thousand pound classic or you're looking for something a little bit more cheaper end of the market stuff that's only just maybe turning classic or little classic that maybe want a lot of work doing to them there's something for everyone which i really like it sort of relates to what i do uh, dealing in the sort of cheaper end of the market because there is still cheap classics out there let me know your thoughts anyway on this one uh, on what you've seen today and even took your fancy of course, another big shout out to Angular Car Auctions for their footage, which we did the reaction video on today. Again, details are in the link description uh, where you can go to their website and find out all about what they do. Thank you again, guys, for watching this one. If you like this content, please let me know. Get that fun button uh, a good press. And also like and subscribe to the channel as well. I get lots and lots of people who view my content, but not all of you are subscribed. And you keep coming back as well, so maybe it's about time you hit that subscribe button to make sure you get my latest content as it lands. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next one.